So we're going to look at the subject today of love and sex. We've got the red roses, we've got the euphoria tincture, we've got a chocolate, we've got the massage oil, I haven't yet put Barry White on the stereo, Marvin Gaye, but it's coming. <laughs> you get the idea. Um, so Julia, I'd just like to uh, talk to you about this subject today. Mm -hmm and share some insights into what we've gained from life. Let's we'll start with love. What is love? That is a massive question, isn't it? I mean, ultimately, we are all love, and that's what we come from. The earth is love. Um, it's that feeling of, I think, connection and um, unity. That, that oneness, that's that's what that love is, isn't it? It's that bursting open of that feeling of, you know? Because we have that one word for love, and in different cultures they'll have different words that explain different aspects of love. Mm. So the love that I have for, for example, Saffron Walden Town, <laughs> it's not the love that I had for my cat, the ginger ferret, it's not the love that I have for you. It's not the love that I have for my guitar, but there's all love there. Not so much for Saffron Walden Town anymore, but... So Yogananda spoke about love. And he said, if you take the love that a mother has for its newborn son, mm. and you take the love that a greedy man has for money, and you take the love that a drowning man has for a gasp of air, that extreme feelings, and he said, if you combine them all, you're not close to divine love. Mm -hmm. You're not close to actually that infinite love that cannot really be spoken about. It can only be experienced. And mm -hmm. I suppose that is the journey of love, isn't it? The years ago when I did the heart meditation, I ah, journeyed into the heart of love. Love is all around. I think there's that wet, wet, wet song, wasn't it? I feel no. it in my fingers. We better not sing it. A copyright infringement's on YouTube. <laughs> So, how do we grow love? How do we experience more love? Well, I think one of the things is to increase our capacity for our love for ourself. I think that's a, a really important thing because you can only receive as much love as you can give yourself. Yeah. And I think that is a, a huge factor in it, that self-worth, that, that self-care. You know, I, I know for me that's a big part of the journey that I'm going through is trying to, or working on taking down those barriers and those shields that we put up to really surrender into loving myself, my shadow, you know, all that darkness and the light, both. And then through that, allowing the love of others in. I think that's that's one of the ways we can increase that love. <coughs> one of Louise Hay's exercises is the mirror, where you look into the mirror and you say, I love you, and go deep, and it can be very difficult. I remember doing that exercise and seeing different people, and when I looked into the mirror, maybe aspects of myself, maybe relations. And her master mantra, I lovingly accept myself. I lovingly accept myself. Welcoming in that, that acknowledgement of, you say, like you say, of the shadow of the darkness. But moving to a place of loving acceptance with it. And then that loving acceptance of other people. When I studied psychology when I was younger <coughs> and looked at the work of Carl Jung and he talked about the anima and the animus and how for me as a male, I will project my female, my ideal upon you. And you as a female will project your male upon us. And Freud talked about the projection of our parents on um, the other person. And um, your dad, Pop Pop, uh, though I'm not posh, I still have a law degree. And Juliet says that Pop Pop was one of the few people in probably in the world who was actually brighter than me. I'd never had the privilege of meeting the Pop Pop to actually test that out. 
but you, you would have agreed. <coughs> so anyway, um, the love of Pop Pop, the love of the ancestors, the love we can hold for each other and that continuing journey of love by accepting that that, that projection is that's not love. Mm. The projection of what we seek on someone else is, it, it's almost like when some people refer to their partner as my other half, it's this almost acknowledgement that I am a half and I'm going to project that other half onto yeah. someone else and if they don't fulfil this idealism and that's why most marriages end in divorce. I mean we're on our second marriage here. We've been through those journeys of discovering, of learning. So how is the awakening of the divine feminine? How do you see that in your own life and in the world? So I've been working with this energy for a while now. Uh, I've been working with, I've called it the awakening of the wild woman and it's a process I've been on and I've been guiding other people on. But it's even shifting from that, it's not that. It is very much the awakening of this divine feminine principle in the earth which as that awakens, it awakens that within us to help to bring in the balance, that sacred union between the divine feminine and the divine masculine, because I feel like both of these divine en energies have gone skewiff in the world. The masculine and the feminine energy, we're not sitting in it properly. Over the last few days, I have felt myself really sitting in that divine feminine so much more than I ever have. It's like this rising up from the core of my being of like, this is my power, this is my strength. And <clears throat> it's this soft, sensual, but strong and firm. Like I feel boundary, I feel like I've got my boundaries more in place, but I feel soft with them as well. It's like this dance of, of, uh, of it all, but it's so much rising up and I think it's doing that for so many people. And I, I don't know how you felt with that energy the last few days with that coming up in me, but from what I've seen, you are stronger in yourself, in your divine masculine, as I'm in my divine feminine more. What, what's your take on that? Uh, well, some people that know you well <laughs> have said that you they think you've looked different, that mm. they've seen a change in you. Um, only recently, and when we talk about love and sex, I, I wondered if this video will get more views than the one on death. Check that one out as well. It's, <laughs> but we'll see. But um, for me, these two things have always been completely linked mm -hmm. in my own personal life. I don't know where I got this from. And I know that sometimes when we... Sometimes when we have values or ideas about things, sometimes they're based on just rubbish, mm. things that we've been told. But are some, some things, wisdom is, maybe it's just within us. Yeah. It's just like, it's just there, I don't know. <clears throat> but for me, it's always been that, for me, it, the, the the love making is that's what it is. It's love. Mm. It's about love, and I think that the world has been controlled through sex, through fear, principally, but then through sex. Mm. Then the fear is our root chakra. Because if you feel safe, you're going to be connected to the energy of the earth and your power. If you can be made to be frightened, ooh, ooh, whatever it might be. But if you can do that to be centred, earth, you start to feel the power. But then it's going to come into the sacral, the sac sacred sex. So Stephen and Renata call their essence sacred sex, the creative energy mm. of allowing that creativity, however <clears throat> it might manifest, to then, to then move and awaken. And then through that solar plexus centre, into the heart and to the love. If we can lift the energy into the heart, then it's, it's all going to be up, uplifted from there. But of course, we have a world of, of people dealing with things and of this projection of 
you know, like they were saying on Twitter that you can, that, you know, these doctors are being censored of their opinions on, you know, you know what, but the, the, it's fine to have porn on it. Yeah. You, you know, but, and, and they, 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 you know, they, they can censor the internet, like, unbelievably for, uh, against, you know, about health, information about health can be censored. Yeah. But, you know... They can't chi- censor child pornography. Child pornography or... is, you know, oh, yeah. no, I can't do it. No, I can't stop that. And you kind of think, well, why is this being pushed? And something that can be the most incredibly uplifting and connecting thing and and the most beautiful thing of you know biology of the creation Mm. of a child or spiritual (laughs) connection as we've experienced and bliss just absolute bliss Mm. can also be used for for for, you know control domination the darkest the darkest things (laughs) absolutely darkest things and i suppose that is is within us the whole ponopono is such a useful practice for us to heal mm. ourselves, but also for us to maybe send out those prayers. Mm. I think on the whole sex thing, you know, we're we're programmed from such a young age that it's, you know, if if you know that it's all these different things that it's dirty, that it's something you shouldn't do, that you shouldn't really, you know, necessarily enjoy. It's all these things that are kind of come in. Or even talk about. <clears throat> yeah. You, you shouldn't even talk about it. It's like when we've talked about, you know, things like the superfoods. And I talk about, you know, helping to give a bit of lead in your pencil, you know, to, mm. as a man, you know. And, and sometimes people get so embarrassed by it. Mm. Talking about things that should be you should be able to talk about. Or the ability to orgasm as a woman. Or, you know, these things that... Um, uh, you know, awakening your higher consciousness, mm. um, the enjoyment of yourself in 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 the act, mm. the taboos about, um, you know, um, our our Judeo Christian idea of uh, one man, one woman, that is imposed upon us. So these thoughts, there's so many things that relate into it, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, on on that that whole front, that you know, that's a an interesting subject because I think as a woman, you know, when a man goes and sleeps with other people, they feel less like they can drop into themselves and trust the connection, and it makes them feel this maybe unsafe. So I think that 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 whole one man one woman comes from a um, a union that that sacred union, which is such a precious thing. And when it's being dispersed here, there and everywhere, it doesn't hold that same energy of of being able to travel to those depths because, you know, it, it's kind of almost broken. So I think that that comes from something. Um, it, it, for my feeling, that's that's that, that actually has some root because also when we have sex with other people, we're taking on their karmic stuff. So, you know, we, there is an impact on that um you know i think that the entering of the yoni by the man is like a sacred act that should be honored and done with such reverence yes and <clears throat> you know generally open relationships for people don't work because they don't feel uh, i think honored or respected or safe in that dynamic yeah i mean of course we have different cultures and different people have yeah. different views and and throughout history people have had different views mm. we had uh, uh we were driving up to yorkshire recently and we had a very deep conversation and as we were talking things were being revealed and you told me about in the um egyptian mystery schools in the temple of isis and the training that went on um I don't necessarily we're going to go too far down the rabbit hole for a uh, YouTube audience here, but can you tell me a little bit about that? Because Steve and Ash and Renata used the word sacred sex and how in the past, um, and, 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 and no doubt today as well, that 
love and sex has been used in magical ways and in healing mm. ways and in ways to activate consciousness. So can you just share a little bit about... Well, this is just my own feelings. This isn't anything factual per se. This it's is not from... A, okay, it's not like a historical thing. It's just... This is what I okay. intuit. This is Juliet's story. From my deeper wisdom from potentially past lives um, and there is evidence that you know if you look at the Mary Magdalene information that came out uh, there's there was a beautiful book called the Magdalene Manuscripts actually um, which talks about Mary and Jesus's um, basically practice of Tantra and the sexual um, exercises to elevate and awaken his light body so that he could um, take the energy of everyone's sins and die and be reborn. You only really have to look at some of the <laughs> temples though in uh, in India and in Egypt and, and even, in, even in Britain. Mm -hmm. You know the Sheila Nagig, if you've ever seen one of them, it's the, it's the woman you know opening herself up like this. You can still see carved into churches so these these rites were undoubtedly being practiced and, uh, and, and, and to the extent that they were being displayed in temple art and in Egyptian temple art and in the, the practices of, say, Tantric Yoga, this sacred union of Shiva and Shakti. But take me back for a minute to the Temple of Isis in Egypt and some of these practices that were taking place there, which obviously were not within the confines of a Judeo-Christian mindset. Well, when we... Um it's, it's linked to the awakening of the Kundalini. When we activate certain energy centers within our body, which can be done through sexual initiations, we awaken this serpent energy which travels up our spine and moves through, clears. It's a bit like a freight train, clearing, 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 until we... And, you know, if you've ever had an orgasm, that's a bit, you know, you can feel if you pull that energy up through your spine, you can feel your energy centers opening and then phew, that bliss of opening into the consciousness and into the unknown and into the mysteries that are all around us. And for me, I am journeying at the moment back in time currently, like not right in this second well, kind of, but mm. into understanding and unraveling the sacred acts that went on at that time I believe in my feeling that I was a high priestess in this temple um, teaching people initiating people into sex magic you know in essence you know into that sacred initiation through this act of um, sex and this is something that's only just recently come to me. I've had glimpses throughout my life, but sometimes it's that jigsaw puzzle and it's slotting those pieces together and then allowing, you know, because it's, for me, there's a lot of fear over um, speaking about this kind of stuff because it's like, oh, people are just going to think you're a bit nuts or, you know, but it's, it's also this deep awakening of that, that magnetic energy that kundalini energy that is rising <clears throat> so yeah there are certain um places uh, sacred initiatory places within britain where a sacred union would take place between men and women particularly at certain times of the year and certain uh, magnetic places uh, there's a, a a chalk figure um called the sun abbas giant he has an extremely large you know what, and just above his head, <clears throat> they used to have maypole dancing, and that was a spot, and also in Avebury, there's a, a, a particular stone that would be used for these, for these rites to awaken this energy for the greatest good, for the greatest good of all. I think that's one of the caveats that's important for our work, um, for our healing work, is it's that, May it be for the greatest good of all. May it be for our good, but for the greatest good of all. Because when you use a word like sex magic... What it sounds it, a bit dark, Well, what it? it makes me think of it is <laughs> Alistair Crowley. Yeah, it's not and, what I'm And some of those to. strange 
things that people got up to. It's that awakening for the highest, it is for that highest consciousness, for the, the awakening of all of us into that space of, enlightenment is such a funny word, but into our self-realisation and so, the realisation of the divine. So a few tools that might uh, help you along the journey. Um, with this lovely drink here, we've got the CBD hot chocolate and the ceremonial cacao. Candles. I will rarely ever buy Julia any flowers that aren't from England, but I just, you know, couldn't help myself. Massage is a lovely practice. Um, got some coconut oil here, essential oils, um, incense. Like I mentioned, Barry White or got some nice mellow music to put on. Just to, to, to sit with one another. And there are some wonderful practices that you can do. You can do them on your own as well if you don't have a partner. And a couple of books. Um, Jewel that, in the Lotus. The Jewel in the Lotus is a, is a very good book of... Um, uh, uh, tantric exercises. Tantric and exercises. A or and, an individual. And uh, a, a form of uh, practices of Kriya Yoga. And also a book called The Art of Sexual Ecstasy. Thoroughly recommend that. You can get these books online. Um, might cost you a few bob, but... Uh, Worth it. Oh, absolutely worth it. Whether you've got a partner or not, or you just want to expand this uh, practices of ecstasy, that's really what it's about. It's about that ecstatic connection, that source energy, that uh, sacred union. That sacred union of oneness that we can really uh, get into so oh we've got some uh, chocolates as well here look that's here we go booja booja don't panic it's organic i think it's time to turn the camera off now julia i don't think youtube will allow um us to broadcast any further so without further ado hope you've enjoyed that information okay gonna put the old barry white on the record player and uh good night from me and good night from her. Good night.